Hello and welcome back. This is uh, Sunday the 12th of March. I had hoped to bring you some footage from the TCS show down in Leicester from the 11th of March, but due to the weather we've been experiencing here in the UK over the last week, I've decided not to make the journey. So we're going to have a look at a couple of items which are derived from earlier TCS shows. So we've got a model we haven't seen there before. And I think I mentioned in the last video associated with the, the TCS show, we had footage. Um, I mentioned I got some other things which we'd look at at another time. So I got this uh, really quite nice play-worn version of a St. Nigel Gresley here. We'll have a look at that in a second. So we, we haven't seen that on the layout before. And these coaches, which I think came from a previous, not the last visit, but the, the visit before, these uh, these LNER teaks, which are, are really, really quite nice. I do have um, some more of those, but with grey roofs, and they are buried in the box, and I haven't been able to dig them out, but I think the, uh, the locomotive looks great with just the two. So we will have a look at that, and when we jump the other side, we'll be able to see some of the progress. So not making the 400-mile uh, the round trip to Leicester yesterday, it left me with a lot of time, so I've got some track work in there, and um, I've sort of improved the wiring underneath for the, uh, for the feed for the three rail, um, or improved what was there. It's it, it wired back to the control in a temporary manner, but much more how it's going to be. I've got a couple of switches in it on a temporary board over there. Again, we can have a look at that when we get to the other side. And I think we can see that loop I was talking about there. So I'm thinking we'll uh, perhaps have some fun with that. But let's, let's have a quick look at this while I've got the, uh, the model broken apart on the, um, on the bench. Sorry, I'm struggling for words there. Let me see if I can uh, give this a little power and we'll zoom in a little bit. Let's have a look there. Now it's definitely been around a bit. It's uh, probably been through the wars and the wiring doesn't look that original, but it looks fairly sort of aged, doesn't it? And if you look at the connection rods quite closely, um, they do appear to be sort of you know, they've suffered, they've bent a little bit, but it all works, so I don't really feel the need to start bending things back into shape if it, if it works. So let's give that a little bit of power. So I'm not sure of the date of this model. Um, it does have a horseshoe magnet, which sort of dates it, sort of makes it fairly, fairly ancient in the, uh, the list of things that the Hornby Double O do, but I'm not quite sure when they swapped over to uh, the other style of magnet. Let's, let's see if we can run that in the other direction. There we go, the, the red paint on those wheels is quite faded, isn't it? Let's, should we wind that up a little bit? That's a little bit daft, isn't it? So we'll... So, it looks pretty good and it does make a, a most tremendous noise on the railway. So when I did get it, it did run the wrong way, wrong way on the controller and I did remagnetize it and it sort of fooled me to start with the remagnetizing because once I'd remagnetized it the other way around for it to run the other way, it, it wouldn't run at all. So in the end, it ended up with some repositioning of the magnet to, to get that to work. I would have thought just remagnetizing it the other way around and it would run, but it, it didn't. So. There we go. I don't know whether that's a, a particular problem with this this uh, locomotive I've got or whether that's just how these horseshoe magnets run. So definitely uh, been around, doesn't it? So there's a lot of wear on those skates. Let's just pop that down there. And uh, let's have a, let's grab the tender over here. Sorry, I wasn't pointing the camera in the correct place. So again, definitely very play worn. It's the blue has taken on a sort of a yellowing in color and it's missing some of its lining, isn't it? And look at those wheels, they're quite lovely, aren't they? Sort of the, the center's painted up in red. And we've got the, an old Hornby Double O sticker down there in the, on the chassis, partially scraped away. That corridor connection on the back, that's a, that's a lovely little detail, isn't it? Is that sort of a, a window, perhaps on the back there, I'm not sure. Let's have a look over the top. So coal load seems to be not too distorted, although it's impossible to tell whether that's the original or whether it has been replaced in the past. You do see those, they sort of go curly and, and shrink, but uh, I think that one's pretty good. So 
Let's leave that to one side and we'll have a, a quick look over the, the body. Again, definitely play worn. I'm just going to move these things back. I'm, I'm running out of space here on the, on the bench. There we go, let's have a, a swift look over that. So I think that's supposed to be a chain link on the front there, which is missing. That's missing on a number of other of my uh, Hornby Double items. So it fits right in really with the, the items in my collection. Definitely all play worn and, and has a good life. So let's have a, you can see that yellowing to the blue there as well. It's been, had plenty of handling, you can see in the past. It's definitely been picked up a few times. There's lovely ties in there which hold, hold the handrails. I think that's quite nice. That great big uh, bolt there for the securing nut to go on. It's not a screw, is it? It's a nut, I think we call that. And you see some splatter from, from oil work in, from, not oil work, from oiling in there. Let's have a look down, down the other side. So quite a lovely thing. The blue is a lot brighter on the inside. So I imagine at some point, in its past, the exterior would have been as vibrant as that. So, but I think it's uh, probably had a lot of a lot of play time. I think it's, uh, it doesn't really, in my eyes, suffer for that at all. So, I think let's just get the uh, the chassis on the rails there, and we'll ha we'll have a look at it running with its top off, and then I'll I'll get it all back together, and we'll um we'll jump the other side and have a look at those other things as well. So let's pop the, let's see if I can do this the one-handed here. Perhaps I haven't chosen the best place to do this. Let's, uh, let's go down here. So I can't get my hands in the other, the other side of that station. Is this going to defeat me? I think it might defeat me this one. Sorry, I'm not pointing that in the right area. Let's try that on the curve there, on the straight, sorry. There we go. Let's get the chassis. I should have brought that along with me. So let's grab this. Move this along. does make a lovely sound when it's in motion. And just uh, these items, they just uh, they continue to impress. I'm not not sure what age this is, but it, it's got to have had. Uh, again, I'm not choosing the right place to pop this on the track. Am I? Let's um, let's get that on the straight. It'd be much much better. Are we on there? Do we risk lifting the tender up to get that on? Yeah, I think we're uh, we're all in good shape there. Let's give that a little power. Let's see how she does. And forward again. Lovely sound, isn't it? Let me hook that up with the uh, the coaches. I've forgotten to uh, adjust the couplings. I, I had meant to do that before I started this, but let's see if that has got those. It has got them, yeah. Let's give that the once around. Off around the back of the engine shed. I think that the light's flickering in the room again. I keep saying I'm going to replace it, but never get around to it. And there it goes, all the way back around to uh, roughly where we started from. Just a little bit more power this time around, I think.
There we go. So I'll get the top back on that and we'll get the other side and we'll uh, give that a bit of a run. So there we go. We're on the inside of the railway now and we've got the top back on. Let's just get that to move away from the station. And we'll just give that the, the once around. See if we can step back a little bit. Storming around behind the station now. I forgot to mention I cleaned the bench, but obviously we'd just seen that, but uh, it's been ages since I had the bench that clear. So you just end up sort of working on top of yourself all the time, but it's having the, the things out you need to hand rather than sort of constantly burying them. That's Let's let that go round the once more. Let's get back a little bit. Let's see all those sidings there. We'll have a look at those in a second. Let's see if we can catch this coming out behind the station. It's a tremendous item, I know I keep saying that, but it really is, I think it's the blue colour as well. The coaches are gorgeous. Let's bring that gently to a stop at the station there. There we go. Let's stop that there. We'll have a, a quick look at the two rail. So let's widen this out a little bit. Actually, there's something else I need to have a look at as well. We'd forgotten all about this. So. Ages ago, we looked at a catalogue and we, we saw the, uh, the Hornby 00 lighting kit and I had a box but I didn't have the, um, the, actual, the actual item to go in it and uh, after the video somebody contacted me and, and offered me one and they very kindly sent this to me. So I've, I've got a, a 6 volt bulb in there, I have a feeling it should be a 12 volt but if you have a look at the, uh, the, the insert picture there, you can, uh, you can see how that looks on the inside of the engine shed there. So I think. I'm just feeding that from the three volt supply that, um, that uh, is powering my point indicators at the moment. So uh, hopefully we'll get that installed and get a wire drop down to the board. We'll get a, a little bit of light in that engine shed. I'm very pleased to get that, but thank you very much to the, the very kind person who sent that to me. It's much appreciated. So let's have a look over here. So that loop that I was talking about, I've got that in there. Let's. Um, Let's swap the controller for a second. So I must get another handheld out. So, um, but at the moment, it's just more to trip over with, with so much on the floor at the moment. I keep sort of dancing around this stuff, so I haven't got as much room to move around. And I've got boxes and things outside of the room, which all should be sort of stacked neatly in various places under here. So let's give the, uh, the locomotive a little bit of power. We'll just take those Suburbans of the once around, just to have a look at obviously going the wrong direction. Pay attention. So we'll just get that to run around. So you have to forgive any uncoupling. This is Mark III couplings on the locomotive and Mark IIs on the coaches. The railway children train there. Lovely wind from the locomotive, very echoey bodywork. Let's see if we can bring this back in here. There we go. Something squeaking there. What is it? Is it a coach? Is it the locomotive? I think it's the locomotive has got a squeak on it. Yeah, I think we'll have to have a look at that. So let's just switch these points over. So this track's all pinned down. I had to cut a few pieces here and there to, to make things fit properly. But uh, ideally, we'll get start getting some of these plumbed in. But uh, I'm sort of improving the wiring at the moment. The, the outside line for the two rail is decommissioned de at the moment, but hopefully it won't be that way for too long. I just need to get around to the uh, some of the cabling. So let's open that one and let's have a look at these sidings. So we've got this very beaten up diesel shunter. We've seen this in the past. I was using this for track cleaning in the past. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get this one to run the correct direction. So again, all of these uh, points, they'll all be eventually hooked up and we'll be able to sort of throw them as we need them. Completely unnecessary, of course, but great fun. So let's, uh, let's give that one a go. So 
So I had hoped to pick up some uncoupling rails I had agreed to, to buy from Dave Angel on uh, yesterday's show, but he's going to post those to me. So I put the track down provisionally here so it won't be very much pr trouble to, uh, to pop in some uncoupling rails there. So I think that's, that's all going to be quite nice. Can't wait to get a few wagons hanging around in there. I think we'll leave that there. We'll just leave that one there. And then the next job, I think, if I'm if I, while I'm fiddling with the cabling underneath, is just to get that turntable plumbed in. It does work, but I just I've never got around to it since since we popped that in. So I think what we should do is put this controller back on the uh, the Nigel Gresley, and um, so we'll leave the two rail alone. There we go, we'll, we'll get that in there. And we'll turn, turn it around. So let's have a look at the points. So I need number 15. So if I look down here, we're looking for, that's 18. Sorry, we're not looking where we're going here, number 15. So we want to make that one curved. So I think that's that way. That's, don't need to look at the switch really. So that one's curved and we need number 16 you would think would be right next to it but doesn't necessarily mean it is yeah number 16 here so we want to make that one curved and we're going to go the right way with the switch there we go and then we need number 10 at the far end down here so let's get that one on. I've already fished that one out so I've already made that one available so we need to make that one curved as well so that now runs as a pair. There we go, I just noticed I've got a flashing lamp in the corner of the screen, telling me there's a Bluetooth issue. So uh, let's see if we can uh, do this before the, the camera decides to go haywire again. Let's see if we can, we can get a little power on here. and see if we can get this to turn around. slight hesitation on that point there so I'll bring this round to the point which is in the wrong direction and we'll stop it and we'll switch out the points there we go so let me uh, look for number 15 again so yeah there's still sort of more to do under here so that's why the, the gap has been left here so let's let's make that one I can't get hold of the switch the correct way, way around there we go make that one straight and we might as well do number 16 whilst we're at it otherwise we'll forget and let's sort out number 10 there we go we'll make that one straight we'll look at the point work this time there we go. So I think one last to run around with this wonderful looking locomotive and we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. Let's see if we can get that coming along there. Storm around the engine shed. And I suppose what we could do, just to finish off with, is stick that in the station, isn't it? Let's pull this to a stop in the other station while I fiddle with some points and see if we can get that to happen. I should have thought of that before. There we go. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do over here. So, I think we need to change number two yeah I think that's all we need to do is change number two so we want to make number two curved and then the other end of that that station looks no it doesn't so we need to do number what number are we on number four so make that one straight yeah now we're in business 
So let's get that into the station and I think we'll, uh, we'll say goodbye. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye now. Back again. Just as we were saying goodbye there, the locomotive sort of hesitated on the on the way into the station. And I think it's um let me, let me just back this up again. Yeah, there we go. I think it has something to do with this rail here. I think the, the plastic part here that sits around it sits slightly proud. I don't know whether the rail is supposed to sit just a bit higher, but the skate is very worn on, on the bottom of this locomotive. I don't know whether it's just not making contact at one point there or one of them. So we're getting that slight pause. The other locomotive that has a, has a similar issue to that is the Kobo I've noticed, but it doesn't like the, the uncoupling rail at this end here. So I've noticed the Kobo doesn't like this one. It's got diff different sorts of different sorts of skate. It's more like a plunger, isn't it, on the on the Kobo. But I think that's all that is, but maybe we'll, this one could do with a, definitely do with a clean here as well. So let's just run that in. But again, I think that's probably about it for this week. Thanks again. Goodbye now. <laughs>